Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here tonight. Just took off my glasses because I'm looking at these two wonderful musicians over here. On my left, tonight, we're going to see two great guitar players, and they are truly terrific, and they play here in Pacifica. Don Rowell and Bernie Bagshaw, welcome to the show. Great that you're here tonight. Thank you. I'd love to start with Don. Don, where are you from originally? Well, I was born and raised in Boston. And uh, that's when I picked up guitar. No accent. <laughs> I have to go back regularly and get my accent recharged. I was thinking, because yeah. otherwise I had no idea. And when did you start playing guitar? I started playing when I was 15. And, uh, you know, it was the rock and roll uh, days with the Beatles and the English Invasion and the Stones. And, and uh, so I put together a rock group. And, but there was a neighbor of mine just a few doors down the street who was a guitar teacher. He had the local music shop in town, and he was a, a professional working musician, uh, mm -hmm. jazz you know, standards player, and he taught me that stuff as well as you know, the rock tunes I wanted to learn. That's fantastic. So you had an interest, but then you were lucky enough to have a neighbor who kind of nurtured you, yeah. would you say? Yeah. And in your family, are you the only one? Place? My mother played piano a little bit, and uh, my oldest brother, brother played clarinet for a while and sang in the church choir, you know, but that's about it, really. Well, that's pretty musical. Yeah. And when did you start professionally? Um, professionally would have been that band in high school because we got paid for playing dances and parties and things like that of on the weekends, course. you know. That's wonderful. So, See yeah. out there, you you know that you can get paid, and then that you're considered a professional once you get paid, right? That's right. <laughs> well, it's so great that now you play jazz guitar mainly. Yeah, right? I, and I, everything, I'm I, sure. I got interested in jazz when I was a teenager, also because I, uh, my best friend's dad listened to a lot of jazz, and so I started listening to it, you know, as much or more than rock and roll by the end of the '60s, I would say. And, um, you know, I've, I've kept doing that. I studied jazz guitar a little bit and classical guitar and then uh, moved to San Francisco in 1971. Uh -huh. uh, when my wife and I got married, we took off the day we got married and ended up in San Francisco. No snow. No snow. <laughs> that was why we stayed, as a matter of fact. Good to know. <laughs> That's true. I've been back east and I always say, oh, it's so cold, but it's cold yeah. here too. Hey, there's no winter here. <laughs> well, it's it's really amazing. You're you're a terrific musician, and you also play at Grape in the Fog, as Bernie does. So yes. we want to really give Beth a big plug. Grape in the Fog is great. It's a wine bar. And when did you start playing there? I started playing there fairly soon after she opened. I think it's been 12 years now that she's been opened, and uh, I was one of the first people to. Uh, sort of talk her into having music there and, and play there. And in more recent years, um, I've been booking the uh, people who play there on Sundays 5 to 7. Every Sunday 5 to 7 is, um, right. is jazz uh, night. So, so Bernie plays there a couple of times a, a month. Uh, I play there once or twice a month. And, and there's two other uh, musicians in the rotation. And I'm going to put my, you know, my hat in the ring too. I'd love to go back there because I did do a couple of things at Grape in the Fog. I mean, it's a wonderful venue right yeah. here in Pacifica. And you're, you live here in Pacifica. Right? You're a friendly neighborhood wine bar. And it's, uh, I live so on this, I live just up the street from, from there, so. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah, and then, I mean, that's good for everybody to know and there's no cover. That's right. That's so, and, and she serves food. But yeah, she has, small menu. she has a small Thank menu and, and, of course, wine and, and beer and, yes. and some non-alcoholic beverages as well. Well, that's terrific. Well, Bernie, let's ask you. Okay. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. <laughs> when did you, oh, first of all, I have to ask you, where are you from originally? I'm from San Francisco. Um, I know it well. Good. Yeah. Native? Native San Francisco. Native, there's so few of us left. 
Well, wonderful. And when did you start playing? I started when I was about 10 years old, with, like Don, with when rock and roll hit. My father bought home an inexpensive guitar, and he, he would listen to like Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Trini oh, sure. Lopez, and him, and him and some of his friends would get together and play. So it sort of spurred me on to, to uh, learn a few chords. And when did you start to play professionally? Same as Don, during high school, I was in a band and uh, we played mostly way improvised jazz. It wasn't uh, popular music, it wasn't really rock and roll, it was sort of like everything together. And, and you know, I'm thinking today's world is a little different. There are not the dances with live music anymore, which I grew right. up with, right? And you did too. So, you know, as at least that's what I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, mostly it's uh, a DJ. A DJ. Yep. Yeah, those two letters <laughs> <laughs> that changed our business tremendously. <clears throat> Excuse me, the live music business, that is. So it makes a big difference. And you also write music? I write music sometimes, yes. I studied, uh, I went to college at Marin in San Francisco State, mostly studied uh, theory and all the orchestration, conducting, all that sort of stuff. Uh, well, so what do you do now? I mean, where mostly do you work and play? Most, mostly, I like I said after before COVID hit, I was playing quite a quite a bit down on Valencia Street and over at Scopa Divino, which is another wine bar. Oh yes, yes, and I know. A Scopa restaurant Divino. called Ula downtown, and uh, that sort of wiped out. And I'm sort of taking a break right now <laughs> from trying to get everything together. You know, call people right. up. Can this person make it this day? Can this person make it that day? It's it's. Uh, and, but you do work in San Francisco at a little lounge, right? Yeah. In West Portal. Yeah, we're, I'm playing there with some friends of mine on March 2nd. It's uh, going to be jazz. There's a singer. Great. I think, we, I think we've got that on the board. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And then you also work in South San Francisco? Yes, at uh, a Sky Cafe. There's an open jazz jam session. It's the first and third Thursday of the month. Oh, and uh, I'm the guitarist in the band. There's, there's a guitar, bass, and drums, and then we have anybody that wants to come and sing or play you, uh, can come and sing or play with us. We, we can play most anything. And that's the first? First and third Thursday, third six Thursday. to nine. Six to nine. Yeah. All right, everybody out there. <laughs> this is great. They're flashing all of these on the screen because jam sessions, or for singers, it's great, mm -hmm. if you like an open mic. Right. It really is. It's a great way to just make it. Well, that's the way. I, that's back when I was working as an electrician. I really didn't play that much a lot of the time because I was in a job that took a lot of hours, and I was a little tired when I got home. But uh, I would go to. There were many more jam sessions around back in the 1990s and early 2000s where you could go, and people would like Don. I'm sure went to a number of them too. And yeah, just people to call different. Well, people <laughs> call different songs that you haven't heard of, so you'd sort of either fail or be good at be good at the song and go home and practice a little, and you know, go back next week. And and uh, you can improvise. You can improvise. Yeah. That's a, a wonderful way yeah. to do it. Yeah, but that's you know, during COVID, I used to do Zoom shows, and instead of well, we did this show on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so there's, you probably can look at some of them. It, it was really interesting. It was great. We couldn't come into the studio, but thank God for Zoom. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know was Zooming, you know. Well, Don and <laughs> I played zoom? out, we played outside at, at A Grape in the Fog in the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. Oh, I heard, it. yes, she advertised <laughs> that. That yeah. was, I mean, that was what you had to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't want to completely give up your talent, right? right? And you have to keep your chops up. So you had to do that. Well, let's hear something that you both do together. Sure. What, what are you going to play? Uh, the first tune we'll do is, is called Jean G, and it was written by Antonio Carlos Jobim. Great tune. A Brazilian Just great. composer. All right. Enjoy. No cover charge, everybody. Just enjoy the great music.
We say bookable. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful background music. I mean, it would be wonderful to have dinner every night at home and have you two walk in and just play background. <laughs> I love that idea. It's very bookable. Because I think you were saying now you have different styles you can play. So that's important. Yeah. I mean, you can work different kinds of venues. Now, tomorrow, Bernie, are you working at Winters? Yes. That'll be more uh, and what, funky, probably. I'm not sure. I've played with all the people before, but I'm not sure what we're going to be playing tomorrow. With, uh, De with Dennis, it'll be funky. Yeah, it'll be fun more, you know, like... Uh, oh, you know, fun. Fu <laughs> more funky, and there's a couple other musicians that are from Pacifica that are well-known. Rick Brown and Jack Kearns are both playing in their both from Pacific and Oh, that's and super. Well See, this is what's so great. There's so, so many musicians, you know, that still are working here in Pacifica. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of venues here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's difficult to recover after uh, the pandemic. You know, a lot of businesses closed mm -hmm. where I used to sing. But um, slowly, it's kind of like they're rising. But... Everybody, you have to go support them out there. You have to go. If you don't, if you don't give them business, then of course it won't last. So that's really, really important. And wait, who else said they work at a bakery? You work I, at a bakery. I have a regular weekly gig at Rosalind Bakery here in Pacifica, which is in Pacific Manor in the shopping center there. And they yeah. make marvelous uh, breads uh, that they bake on site there and croissants and sandwiches and coffee drinks and, and it's a, a really nice spot and um, it's a regular weekly gig with a trio usually with keyboard and bass and guitar that's wonderful uh, occasionally mix it up with drums instead or another guitarist perhaps you know in a bakery and, uh, yeah but it's it's wonderful we met uh, yeah. i met the owner when we used to both play some at the farmer's market well i, I played and he brought his products but he was a jazz fan and you know, it's been a it's been a wonderful thing to have a regular uh, uh, weekly thing there. Yeah, at the bakery, so you can wake up with music. You then you can go to the wine bar and get ready. You know, for the evening with music. I ten, don't know. I think I'm. I don't know if I mentioned the hours. Ten to twelve on Friday mornings. Okay, in the morning, ten to twelve, yeah. right, at the bakery, and then five to seven at Grape in the Fog, and then yeah. of course we put other gigs mm -hmm. on the screen for those who are interested and I have to ask you about your regular professions so Don what did you do when you weren't playing music to make well, a living I I um, ended up being a stage hand uh, a re um, mainly audio I did lighting and uh, and audio work and uh, eventually got, got to work with IATSE Local 16 which is the union for uh, stage, stage crews, and I worked mainly at the Opera House in San Francisco for the San Francisco Opera and the San Francisco Ballet for about 30 years or so. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's great. Yeah. Now, tell me when you, you know, opera singers have powerful voices. Oh, they certainly do. But what, was it overhead mics in the Opera House? Well, what, what our miking in the opera was um, really for, uh, for recordings and for uh, monitoring for people backstage and, and throughout the building to be able to hear what was going on. Oh, that and we did good. archival recordings for all of the operas and, um, and also monitoring of the orchestra back to the stage so that the singers could hear the orchestra because they're oh, sunken right. in a pit and they sometimes can't hear what they, what they need to from their cues that, you know, That's that well important. acoustically. I bet. But the basic music is, you're right, is acoustic. There's also things like bandas, which are musical groups that play off stage, or off stage voices yes, that need that's to be right. mic'd. And there's sound effects. There's a 
thunderstorms and you know oh, you church were bells part and of all cannons of that. and all that sort of stuff. How exciting! Yeah, yeah I remember um, I had a friend of mine's daughter who was singing part of a chorus of a musical in San Francisco, and it was under the stage, and she was in a separate room, and they would pipe in the voices. Mm -hmm. I never knew that that's what was happening. And people in the audience never knew where the voices came from. But it was, and you know, maybe the dancers, they thought they were coming from the dancers. But there's a few tricks that you learn, right? Many tricks. Yeah, many tricks, I'm sure. And what about you, Bernie? What did you do I was professionally? An, I was an electrician in downtown San Francisco for IBW Local 6 yes. uh, for about 30 years. And mostly uh, remodeling floors of buildings and... Uh, Things like that. And I think I already told you I have a job for you. I know, you did. <laughs> See, that's the other thing. I think people have to remember there are times now that people have regular jobs, regular gigs, we call them, right? And then you're into music part-time or, you know, hopefully full-time. But very few people are traveling, doing music full-time. It's, it's really difficult and I was lucky enough to have a career where I traveled, made a living at music, and then I also taught music here at Good Shepherd. And uh, some of my students were on this program. I used to bring my choir on every so mm -hmm. often. So did you two ever teach, or do you, on the side, do you have a little? I teach guitar lessons every once in a while. If, I, don't, really? I don't go out of my way to get it, but if somebody sees me playing and says, oh, you know, how do you do that? It's a lot of practice is the most thing everybody, a lot of people are looking for a immediate uh, gratification or, you know, they think there's some magic, uh, that's right, magic mm -hmm. potion you can just automatically get to do it. But it, it takes, I'm 70, I've been playing for 60 years and a lot of it, you know, on and off more or less during that time. But I've spent a lot of hours playing, so everybody says, oh, you make it look yeah. so easy. Well, it's not, it's not easy. easy. <laughs> yeah. But you play lead guitar, too. Yeah, it, it's, it's all the same thing. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> we, I, do, we just call it guitar. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it's the same thing, because I can play rhythm, but I never spent the time learning to play lead. It was much more intricate, because I also played the piano. I mm -hmm. studied piano a little bit. And I can accompany just just enough. Not, I mean, I can't compete with the real terrific pianists mm -hmm. that I work with. But with rhythm guitar, I could work with other musicians. You know, if I just play rhythm, well, and that, it and it was easier for me to learn. That's right. it's it's good if you're a singer to be able to accompany yourself. Yeah. There's a lot of singers that can't right. play anything, and they have a lot of difficulty. You know getting it together on their own, so they're always... Well, looking. I did a solo gig playing mm -hmm. rhythm and was booked as a singer-guitarist mm -hmm. in the 70s, would you believe, and part of the 80s, before the synthesizer came in, <laughs> <laughs> before DJs were popular. So, you know, it changed a lot of lives in the music business, changed our business, I think. And you say you also compose mm -hmm. original music. Do you, do you do any composition? I, I don't. My, I think of I think of Im improvisation. I mean, there's so many there's so many wonderful songs that have been written through the years. And, uh, yes, true. Uh, so I, I look at you know the songs that I are already written, and then you know what I can do with them. Improvise. And improvisation is sort of my form of spontaneous composition. That's if great, you, if you will. And I think I heard you play with. Um, well, our friend Todd at the church, you know, yes. around uh, Fat Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's New Marty, Orleans Todd's kind annual of, Mardi Gras. Yeah, Mardi Gras band. Yeah, and that, that was a lot of that fun. That was a lot of fun. So you know different styles. You know, that's great. I'd love to hear the next tune you're going to play together. Um, what sure. is it called? This is, uh, this is a tune written by Thelonious Monk called uh, oh. Blue Monk. Explain a little about Thelonious Monk, just to Thelonious for those Monk out was there a not know you know this. American jazz piano player. Um, started in the late '40s, probably, and and the thing that that always gets me about Monk these days is he was considered originally so wild and offbeat and radical in his time, and his Animation. songs now have become just a mainstay standard of the jazz repertoire, and even 
even if you know beyond that probably you know that they're very right. familiar songs like uh, around midnight for example oh, is one song. of his compositions i mean yeah. he, he often had these little wacky offbeat kind of things in his songs and he was he he uh was a character that he you know he he developed this character that uh you know that people knew him as but uh now you know just mainstream jazz master well go ahead let's hear it for everybody out there this is great blue monk with the popular duo One, two, three, four. audience roaring with <laughs> approval and applause applause that was great I see what you, you mean you know there's when I hear this it sounded like blues almost that, like a little that was blues. exactly blues <laughs> and it's, but it's not I mean it's not like I'm going to Chicago you know it's a little bit like that but it's the variation oh. right on it yeah. Thelonious Monk would use a lot of quirky chords <laughs> A little it. more Disney, he would play, you know, he would add quirk. Uh, I love it. Rather than little, just the straight. Yeah, he had a quirky, you know, he used two fingers on the piano. Also his right. rhythmic sense. Yeah. Was, also his rhythmic sense was, you know, usually had a little twist to it, too. That'd be wonderful. See, you could teach. Both of you should go around to the schools <laughs> and, okay, we would like to talk about <laughs> jazz tonight. I mean, it's true that there's a lot more to it than just listening. You know, it's fun to learn the intricacies of everything. And Don, tell me about a band, the jazz band that you started in 2002. Yeah, I was, right? well, I was one of, the, one of the people who started this band. It was actually st started by a piano player named David Ilvitson, who has since passed. But um, yeah, this started a long time ago now. And we've gone through a few personnel changes, but there's several of us who are original to that band. It's a uh, piano, bass, drums, guitar, um, 
two saxophones. We originally had a trumpet. Uh, he passed also. Yeah, that's what happens when you have old musicians. <laughs> and uh, we have a singer. We have a singer <laughs> named uh, named T Tina Schuller, who's a wonderful oh, vocalist with that really. band. And and recently a, a second singer who's been singing some backup with Tina, but also will be singing some stuff on her own, named uh, Shelley S uh, Sorensen. And um, we we Where do you play. play? We play at um, the concert hall at uh, Pacifica Performances, Mildred Owen Concert yeah. Hall. We do one concert a year because we we rehearse there, and um, Norm Dutton, the saxophone, the Barry and tenor saxophone player in the band, is also a piano technician. So he takes mm. care of the piano. They have a wonderful uh, Baldwin piano there. Yes, great piano. And um, and I was on the Norm is currently on the board. Of, Pacific performances. I served on that board for a number of years, including a stint as the board president too. Mm, and um, you know, it's a great uh, venue for lots of kinds it of music. It is a great venue. Well, everybody, take note of that here in Pacifica. There's a lot going on, and everybody can get out. No excuse for not seeing live music, right? That's right. And Bernie. Thank you for being on the show. You're and welcome. Can you just play a few little of your original song? Just show us oh, a little yeah. bit. We have Let's about see. two seconds, just a little bit. That was wrong. Oh. <laughs> I haven't played it on the well, guitar. Well, how about pearl. you two yeah. playing us out? Okay, so sure. We can, we, okay, anything you want. I don't care. What would you like to All do? of me. We can do yeah. that. You sing it. You sing it. I'll play it. <laughs> okay. Here it is. I'm auditioning. Mm -hmm. 